No. Hey there, Lyo Convoy again. Last time, we covered issue 3 of the He-Man Thundercats crossover, and I'm pretty sure I've lost brain cells doing so. However, I'm not one to quit when I've started a task, so we're continuing on with issue number 4. But I have to preface this with something before we begin. I passed my last review on to someone who is pretty knowledgeable about comics, and he pointed out something to me. What I've been doing at the start isn't actually a synopsis. It's a literal play-by-play -play of events, which is kind of the opposite of a synopsis by definition. Keeping this in mind, the rest of the reviews will be sticking to the actual definition of a synopsis, which is a brief summary or general survey of something. This not only makes it easier to listen to, but will cut the amount of editing I need to do in these videos to a bit of a shorter degree, especially considering it's been taking me over five hours to do them in the past. So, that in mind, we'll begin. We have a new narrator talking about how things must come to an end, as we open to Eternia under assault by the ancient spirits of evil. Skeletor and Mumra, of course, are prattling on and patting themselves on the back for the havoc they've unleashed. At the palace, the Thundercats and Eternia's defenders quarrel a bit, and Lionel decides to take the Thunderstrike to Third Earth with Cringer and Prince Adam's body. They land on Third Earth at Mumra's Pyramid, and notice a mutant fighter jet has also landed outside of it previously. They enter, and Lionel places Adam's body in Mumra's sarcophagus, commenting on how it should restore Adam like it does Mumra. Lionel states that he'll stand guard, and wants Cringer to scout the area due to the fighter jet outside. Cringer protests, but Lionel tries something to boost his courage and power. So tell me, class, what do you get when you combine Cringer with the power of the Eye of Thundera? Well, the villains raiding Mumra's treasury find out the answer is pain. Lots and lots of pain. The sarcophagus finishes its work, and He-Man bursts forth from it, maddened, evil, and enraged, and begins to immediately attack Lionel. Lionel does well against He-Man, even managing to disarm him and stab him in the side. However, that still isn't quite enough to overcome He-Man's advantage and strength, as Lionel is actively trying not to kill him. Lionel calls upon the Sword of Omens to give him power beyond power, which levels the playing field in strength. Lionel grapples with He-Man and uses Sight Beyond Sight in an attempt to show him what's going on on Eternia, in an attempt to break his madness, but the sword only shows him a terrible vision of the future. He-Man breaks free and Lionel commits to the idea that he may have to kill He-Man to stop him, but right before his blade descends on He-Man's neck, it stops, for He-Man is broken out of the madness and the sword would not harm him. Introductions are exchanged, Cringer is collected, and they all head back to Eternia where the sorcerers and the ancient spirits are descending upon Grayskull at last, as we close out to discover that He-Man is the narrator for this issue. The writing on this issue was a bit better. The pacing flowed fairly well, and the story benefited by not having so many characters to juggle in its script. My issues with the content of that writing will be addressed in the lore portion of the review, though. Same issues as all the others, but a few new ones this time. Now the Claw Shield has a darker brown color, which makes no sense to begin with as it's supposed to be gold, and Freddy Williams seems to have a common artist problem when it comes to holding objects. He generally just draws a fist and places a weapon around it. In reality, a weapon's handle occupies space in the hand. It makes no sense to draw this way. A lot of artists learn from life drawing and personal experiences. Based on this, I can only assume that Freddy has never held a sword before. Speaking of swords, the fight here was a bit better paced than the last one, with one panel moving fairly seamlessly to the next in fluid motion. Why they couldn't pull this off last time is beyond me. You can, though, tell that Freddy really doesn't understand the mechanics of how a sword fight works, but also by how close he has them when fighting. More to this point is the disarm sequence itself. In Talhofer or Meyer's fencing manuals alone, there are multiple techniques to disarm someone without such a complicated method. There are similar techniques taught to the ones shown here, but this really wasn't needed. Battle Cat Man, though, was a treat, gonna be honest here. Alright, few things here. Panthro and Tigra are shown to be complete jerks when looking at Man-at-Arms weaponry. This isn't in character for either of them to talk down to someone about their tech, especially an ally. Keep in mind, the Thundercats are the most technologically advanced people on Third Earth. The Warrior Maidens and others aren't anywhere near that level, yet you've never seen them talk down to them because of it. There's also Chitaro's defensiveness of Lionel when Tila snapped at him. Very out of place for her as well. There's also Lionel's brilliant plan for bringing Adam back. 
It doesn't matter if he admits it's dumb in the comic, it was stupid for multiple reasons. Firstly, Mumra has a counterpart on Third Earth called Mumrana. The same plot could have been followed up with her instead of contriving this to make the characters fight, but we'll get into that in a bit. There's also objects like the Totem of Dara that could have been used. Totem of Dara has legendary healing powers. Through the centuries, successive generations of Thundercats have used the Totem to overcome sickness and disease. The Totem's healing powers are so great that it can even bring inanimate objects to life. Using an objectively evil power source to revive a hero is one of the dumbest ideas out there. And the comic breaks its own made-up rules with this, too. Remember how Skeletor stated that he couldn't harness Grayskull's power due to not being worthy? This is likely due to his evilness, and it states that it would kill him to try to get the power of Grayskull without Mumra's immortality. Yet Adam, maddened and evil from the Pyramid's power, is able to call upon Grayskull's power without issue. There's also the fact that nothing should be happening with the sarcophagus at all, considering the ancient spirits of evil are currently rampaging on Eternia. They're Mumra's power source, and by extension, the power source of the sarcophagus. You see that pretty clearly in Lionel's Trial of Evil. The sarcophagus! That is the secret of your power! This is what renews your energy! No! Without this casket... You will be powerless! They're not omnipotent. They're very much so confined to where they are. Now, some people take issue with the Sword of Omens harming He-Man in this issue, but I'm actually going to defend that, believe it or not. Though He-Man is generally good, his current state in this comic is maddened by evil. The Sword of Omens in the series proper has even shown that it'll defend Lion-O against even good people when need be. But there's also the fact that in this comic itself, Lionel states that the Sword of Omens cannot give visions. Yet in the very first issue, he states that it gave him a vision. This is ridiculous. They can't even keep their own consistency. Now as far as the fight goes, I think the comic did a fairly good job of showing that Lionel could hold his own against He-Man. An enraged, out-of-control He-Man at that. And this is while Lionel is actively holding back and half-blind. I plan on tackling this abomination in the near future, by the way, so look forward to that. Use Mamrana, the Totem of Dara, or any other thing to revive Adam. This will allow the writers to greater expand upon the world and scope of the series. You can even have her comfort Cringer, as he's currently struggling with the concepts of death and loss. If you want the characters to fight, a misunderstanding or opposing view of a situation would work best. If you really need one at all, honestly. Thank God. Only two more issues of this left. Let me know what you think of this issue, or your own thoughts about this in general. Do you like the shorter plot synopsis, or do you want me to go back to the old way of doing this? Let me know in the comments below. I'd like to thank my patrons Avis and Mega Umi. If you want to support my content, feel free to do so via Patreon in the link in the description. Higher tier patrons get free monthly commissions, just to remind you. You can support me for as low as a dollar. Feel free to sign up if that's what you want to do. The contest for the 1,000 sub is still going on, of course, and you know what you'll win by now. No art for the videos this week, so I want to remind everyone, if you have any art of 80s characters or their reboots, feel free to post them on Twitter or Tumblr with the hashtag LyoFeatureMyArt, and I'll put it at the end of the video with full credits and link to your stuff. This is Lyo Convoy signing out for now. Take care.